let us start our journey. So last week, we were talking about ignorance and you know even the Upanishads, the highest text says Asatoma Satagamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya. In these two lines we can write minimum thousands of pages. Lead us from ignorance to wisdom <coughs> and lead us from the false to the real. The entire Eastern wisdom is based on that. A little bit of deviation, we will come back to ignorance again. <coughs> Ignorance causes the suffering, ignorance is the source of all the ills, all my hatred, duality, jealousy, anger, hesitation in the world. If the ignorance is not there, you have a freedom, total freedom in our life. But in order to commit to the journey, Commitment is required, sincerity is required, and we should be able to explore the ultimate cause of this entire existence. And the ultimate cause we find it is nothing but it is nothing but our real self. Now understand this ignorance. Ignorance means misconception, wrong notion, at a very surface level. Oh, I don't know you. That is also ignorance. But you are in front of me, and still I don't know you. We are going deeper. You have to contemplate and reflect. I don't know you, but you are still in front of me. You are open totally. But I don't know you. That ignorance, if it is not removed, mindfulness doesn't succeed that way. No meditation succeeds. <clears throat> so that is why the Master says, <clears throat> Master says that we have to become a qualified seeker. And to become a qualified seeker, we need to have a power of discernment in the intellect so that I can separate the false from the real. And the more I separate from the false from the real, the things becomes clear to me. Let us come back to the first metaphor. This master says, pure consciousness is there, hidden. And that pure consciousness becomes the reflected consciousness because the mind is the medium by which I, I know the world. And that reflected consciousness uh, manifests the entire world of name, form, problem, pain. And the second metaphor that gives us a clue that there is only one consciousness, there are not many. So second metaphor is about the pot space, the space inside the pot, and the space outside the pot. One is the micro space, and other is the macro space. The macro space is the supreme consciousness, which is known as the God in all the religions. <clears throat> I will talk in detail about that, just for the sake of understanding. So the space inside the pot, which is a micro space, and the space outside the pot, which is known as the macro space, they are not too different. 
they are one entity, but still we consider them as two. And then in the that part space, we put the water, it becomes a water space, but the space as such does not, space continues to exist in the pot. Whether you put the water, you put the tea, you put anything, or the soup. And the same thing, it means the water space is superimposed on that part space. Similarly, the entire world of name and the form are superimposed on the on the entire on the one consciousness. There is only one consciousness. So, because of this superimposition, we have a wrong notion. We have a wrong notion that. There are four consciousnesses. Fact is that there is only one consciousness. There is only one pure consciousness, which you can name it as a real self or name as, as, as why this happens. So last time we discussed that it happens because of the ignorance. So pay attention now that what exactly. So if we said that ignorance has two factors. One is the root ignorance, and other is the secondary ignorance. You can say the primary ignorance, and uh, other is the secondary ignorance. So primary ignorance covers everything. We are going into a deeper and deeper aspects uh, from the teachings of this master. So you have to have that foundation very clear. <clears throat> so the root ignorance is the cause of all the other ignorance. What is the root ignorance? The morning you wake up, we have a blind belief that I am the body. I am the body, and I am separate from the other beings. And what is the secondary ignorance? Secondary ignorance that we own the things, that we are the doers of our actions, that we are limited by the time and the space. First ignorance, primary ignorance, that we are the body and the what? Because I am the body, so I am limited here in Arizona. You are limited there in New Jersey, so we, so you see that? That limitation comes to the mind. How it comes, that we will cover in the following sessions. So at present, we are understanding. Pay attention, the moment we wake up in the morning, consciousness is limited first by the body. The mind reflects on the body and it says, I am the body. <clears throat> and secondary ignorance, we are the doers of the actions. I own this body, I own this house, I own this shirt. Oh, long list. It instantly flashes into my mind. So I don't recover from that ignorance that I'm the pure consciousness. I'm the pure consciousness. We are the body. We may identify with our physical appearance. Now, now see that what happens? <clears throat> the moment we identify that we are the body, then we then a long list, millions of things enters into our head. First, I am the body, then I am the man or the women, then I identify myself with the appearance of the body, I identify with my emotions my thoughts and then what happens then mind says this is what you really are are you paying attention first time the worry then you see ah, i'm an american or british or indian then my appearance then my gender all those thoughts pops up in the mind and mind do not allow these thoughts to leave, then what happens, a strong notion is created in the mind. 
So first thing, we are the body. And from there, a long list enters into our mind in the form of a thought, feeling, and the emotion. And then what happens? Once it says that appearance, so I own this appearance. There are two things. First, I am the body. Second, I own the body. I possess the body. I possess the body. I possess this appearance because I possess this appearance. For example, I am not as beautiful as you are. Hence, then there is a long range of emotions and feelings and the thoughts, whether it's a negative or the positive. So the master is saying, by understanding, we have to get rid of this ignorance. <clears throat> How? To remove the ignorance of the mind, that is why we have to practice meditation. <clears throat> Relaxation and calmness are the byproducts of meditation. We can definitely can relax in any meditation. But the main goal of mindfulness or meditation is to remove the ignorance. If we do not remove the ignorance, then we use the meditation as a pill. As a pill. Oh, whenever I am in stress and then I let me do practice the meditation, relaxation is there. <clears throat> no. The goal of the Eastern wisdom, the aim of the meditation in Eastern wisdom is to remove that ignorance. So both has to work, the knowledge plus the practice. So that practice has two parts, the contemplation and reflection. Plus the practice, contemplation and reflection on the principles of the Eastern wisdom, the way the masters have been teaching us. We have to repeat it. We have to repeat it again and again through the contemplation and reflection. Otherwise, this ignorance is not going anywhere. So that what we discussed last time, the ignorance has two factors. One factor is the veiling power, the concealing power. Who are you? You see, you are presenting before me, but there is a concealing power. I don't know you. I don't know you. There is a concealing power. I don't know it. I don't know this. I don't know this. So go, go a little deeper. I'm just going slowly. So when I say, I don't know you, is it thought? The thought and the words generate the veiling power, the concealing power, generate the thought and the words that deny the existence and experience of the real self. Did you get it? When I say I do not experience the real self, it is a thought in the words. Same way I say you that I don't know you. But you are presented before me. That much is very clear. <clears throat> that much is very clear. You are present. I don't know you. The real self, consciousness is present here. And the mind says, I am the body. So I have concealed the real self by the concealing power of the thought and the words. Oh, you meet some, someone new and you say, I don't know. I don't know you. So the thought has a concealing power. And then, then projection power. Then comes the projection. So if I don't know me, if I don't know I am the real self, that power projects the false identity that I am the body. I'll discuss it in a couple of uh, sessions so that you are clear before we go to the next. So, Master, look at the way the Master says, <clears throat> the moment I don't know you, it scatters my attention of the mind outward. What is outward? The body. I'm the body. 
after saying I don't know you, I have some projection. What is that projection? You are a man, you are a woman. Uh, possibly you are of this age and you might be doing this. The same thing happens to ourselves. Who is doing all this? It is the mind. Why the mind is doing all this? Because the mind lives in ignorance. Master says, unless we contemplate and reflect daily, it will never happen. <clears throat> now I know what, what this master is teaching. I know the definition of ignorance. You can do PhD in ignorance, but if you do not contemplate and reflect and practice, it will never happen. I want to know myself. And that's why. A beautiful stories, you know, I repeated, I think, last year, perhaps. <laughs> Master had 10 disciples, 10 seekers <clears throat> in a monastery. And they were living in a forest. So he, Master, told all the disciples that you go to the nearby village and beg the food. But he warned that you should, you should count that you should remain ten seekers. You should not leave anyone. So on the way to cross, on the way to the village, they have to cross a river. They all crossed a river, and the one guy started counting: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh. There is no 10 people, there is only nine. This is how the mind projects the projecting power. It is the projecting power of the mind. So the second guy also counted, there are only nine. There is no 10th guy. So they lost one. Perhaps they thought that the 10th man was drowned. And ultimately, another wise guy was passing by. He recognized what is the mistake, what kind of a wrong notion they had. So he said, I will find it out. Hold on. Now, here I want to stress. So if you don't believe the master who is talking about the principle you will believe all the students who have only counted nine. To understand the entire journey, that is why the power of discernment and dispassion are required to become an eligible seeker. So they all they all started looking at this wise man. I will find it out. Stand there. And he called one person and he said, start counting. So he was pointing the finger. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then he pointed the finger to that guy who was counting. Here is the tenth guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is the outside. It is the projected. And now is the tenth guy is you are the tenth man. <coughs> Because of the ignorance, because of the concealing power, and because of the willing power, or you can say the concealing power, and because of the projection. We cannot, mind does not contemplate and reflect what is behind this mind and the body complex. And we lost sight of it, and we continue to live in ignorance last week you know i'm just explaining further what we did in the last week we said ignorance misconception wrong notion it can only be removed by knowledge 
So if that knowledge is not settled in the mind, followed by you do the practice, then you recognize, then you reach to your real self. But if the knowledge is not there, then what happens? Your mind projects, you know, what happens into the mindfulness meditation? Oh, I will, I relax. I calm down. Now, there may be a lot of physiological changes are there. So we have thousands and thousands of research papers published. They are repeating the same thing again and again. Their heart rate goes down. But I'm different from my heart rate. Your anxiety level goes down. <laughs> I am different from anxiety. So those scientific research papers continues to live in that ignorance. They are good. No doubt. I'm not criticizing them. Do, do you see that point? They are not finding who am I. They are finding the physiological, biochemical, neurophysiological, neuropsychological changes. We don't have any. We, we are not opposing this. But that is not going to work. That has nothing to do with awakening. Today my heart rate is OK, and tomorrow I have a heart attack. Unnecessary. No, I'm not saying that, you know, just go for uh, <laughs> medical checkup and everything but but that very existence is totally different from the heartbeat and the pulse rate it is the pure consciousness it cannot be affected so there we are pointing out oh so the student says you know i'm confused what is this wailing power you we just let us be clear again <coughs> Say, if you ask, you know, what is, I'm confused. So the master gives us an example that you, do you see, have you ever misperceived something? Oh, yes, many a times. Did you experience a mistaken identity? Oh, many a times. That is the concealing power. We have a mistaken identity. That happened to us many times before. <clears throat> so the ignorance is at work. Are you feeling stressed? Is your mind is saying that I'm not able to understand? So the concealing power is at work. You need an awareness. You need an awareness. When we fail to perceive something accurately, ignorance covers up the truth from us. In the same way, ignorance veils our true nature as pure consciousness. It hides the truth of who we really are. We are talking of the root ignorance, concealing power. But the question you can ask, how can ignorance conceal something that we all have? Do you have that question? Yes, you should have that question. How can ignorance conceal something that we all have? Go back to the story, the tenth man story. The tenth man was already present, and still he does not know there is only nine people. There's only nine people. Someone has to tell me that you are in ignorance. You have a wrong notion. Someone has to tell me and make me understand that I am not the body. That is why we have it master in a seeker tradition. Take this example here. Just now, here. Consciousness is behind the claim of the mind that I am the body, but I don't recognize that I am the consciousness. 
it is here and now. And that is the example explained by this metaphor of the ten people. So when we ask that, how can ignorance conceal something that we all have? It is concealing all the time. We identify with the body and the appearance and the age and the gender and the problems, and then we are living in ignorance. Another question comes, so it means that ignorance destroys our real nature? No, it cannot. But it manages to make us completely oblivious of it. We become oblivious of it, that I am the real self. It always recognizes I am the body and the mind complex. I am intelligent, I am dull, I am good, I am bad. And so all those wrong notions hijacks, it conceals. How? Think of it, how? I've already given an answer. That is what the Master will talk in the next uh, verse. Master says, this ignorance creates the thought and the words in our mind saying. What it's saying? The real self does not exist. Why the real self does not exist? Because I don't experience it. Because I'm the body. Because I'm the body. A kind of hypnotic spell. And it has been since our childhood. It has been since our time. We do not contemplate, I am really the body, or I possess the body. I possess the body is a projection. And a thought and a feeling and idea that I am the body is a concealing power. We are going deeper. We have to contemplate a little deeper. This ignorance stuff is very tricky. I don't experience the real self thought. Clear? I am the body. I feel that I am the body. Thought. I'm not able to discern between these two thoughts. I don't contemplate and reflect. Let me check if I'm really the body or not. So the concealing power, and then comes the power of projection. These two powers are very important. If you clearly understand this, that understanding lives with you. Meditation is just a play and fun. Why it is a play and fun? You are talking to someone, you can be into that state of mindfulness or meditation all the time. You close your eyes, you can go into meditation. It is not a practice, it's a way of understanding. It's a tricky. So what the Master is saying, that we should understand how this concealing power operates. What to do? That is why, that is why you have heard from all the meditation teachers, watch your thoughts and beliefs arising from the mind. Are you getting it? That is why I always use the word, be carefree silently. Why we have to see and watch these thoughts are coming and going into the mind? These thoughts create a willing power. 
I need not to get attached to any of these thoughts. It looks so simple. Everyone uses because many masters use it. So we say, oh, just be carefree, let the thought come and go. So I create another thought which says, let every thought come and go. So that thought is also a concealing power. <laughs> so it's a very subtle. <laughs> because I have already thought. <laughs> Not to think you need a lot of contemplation and reflection. And then we are caught up. Now I observe the thought for two minutes. And uh, I'm already, I have already concealed the real self. It takes time. It takes contemplation and reflection, my friends. Power of concealing and the power of hiding, you can say, or power of projection. So then the master says, when I'm really watching the thoughts without creating a thought of watching, I enter into a witness consciousness. That is why we use the word witness consciousness. Witness is neither belongs to this thought in that thought. It's a pure awareness. And that pure awareness is I am. And that demands a lot of contemplation and reflection. That is why the Master says, you have to listen and learn with the teacher first, and then you have to listen and learn by yourself. And then with eyes closed, sitting on a lazy chair, you contemplate and reflect on this. Is any thought created a projection? So first thought, it says, let me witness. And now that thought has created a projection. So both the factors of the ignorance are working together. And then I am in stress. It is, is it not a thought? When you say that I have a lot of stress, is it not a thought? How many times you feel it is a thought? And how many times you actually feel you are in stress? <laughs> are you getting it? Can I brush aside? It is the thought. I forget it. So both the factors are coming. Hiding. I am the real self. Forgotten. Projection. Oh. One young guy, you know, one guy lives nearby. You drive it in there, you live in No, I have a lot of feeling, you know, how to get rid of that feeling of the stress. Now, see that? He said, I could see your six feet, four inches, and I could see your body is well built. You spent uh, two or three hours in the gym, and you have already gone to the doctor. Your heart rate is also good. What else you need? No, I have a feeling that my heartbeat is high. <laughs> I can tell you 90% of the people have this kind of a projection because I don't contemplate and reflect on it. So these two powers of ignorance are constantly at work because I live in ignorance in my professional life, in my social life, in my family life, in my any, the moment I wake up. Mom, I don't want to listen to you. Projection started. Boss says you something. Projection started. You have a headache. Projection started. You see there. 
we have to contemplate. If you do not contemplate, if you just take it, no, it will not work. I'm not saying that you do the practice, but first contemplate, reflect on it. We have to be a committed seeker, then only it works. <clears throat> Ignorance, first, it creates a confusion about who we are. <clears throat> the first power is the veiling power, hiding power. You already know the curtain hides the sun. But we are pure consciousness. Now see the other other way to understand it. We are pure consciousness. You said consciousness is all pervading. It is present everywhere. It cannot be divided. And at the same time, you say that that the ignorance hides this. Look at the height of the logic and the reasoning. And I gave an example. The master gives an example. We say the sky is clouded. How do you see the sky? Is, no, the sun is clouded. Sun is waved. Only in the presence of the sunlight, I see the sun is clouded. Only in the presence of consciousness, I have a thought that I am the body, but I don't recognize it. Are you getting it? Without consciousness, there is no, there cannot be any thought. I don't have even a wrong knowledge that I am the body. So I forget the consciousness. I rely more on the thought, which confuses me. First, I am the body, that I am a man, that I am a man, woman, and then I have this profession, that profession. Then I have a lot of challenges in the problem, and the whole chain of the thoughts enters into my mind. They all works as a projecting power, and I lose myself. I don't see that consciousness in me. The master says there is a way to understand anything that is false and the wrong notion, they come and go. They depend on the real consciousness. They depend on the real self. Real self is the pure consciousness. So my every thought depends on the consciousness. But the consciousness is independent of the thought. That is why we say, let the thought come, let the thought go. Consciousness is there. Consciousness is there. While listening to me, your mind may have gone somewhere else. That is your projection. That is why we need an extraordinary attention. Understanding this projection and uh, the wailing power. Master tells us another story that I'm going to, and then we will examine in the following session, we will examine the very experience in the thought. What is this experience? What is this thought in the structure of the thought that evades that that makes us live in the suffering all the time. So everyone recognizes the oldest city in India is Varanasi, Banaras. And there is a tradition on Banaras, uh, there is a king. And the tradition of the king that those kings were highly awakened people. So just 100 years ago, king had a son of 10 years old boy. Pay attention and understand. I'm just explaining the wailing power in the projection, projecting power. Everyone in our tradition uh, narrates the same story. It gives a deeper insight into it. 
So the king and the son had to go to see a theater where the play was there. So there is a role of a girl has to be played and the girl became sick. So this boy played the role of a girl. And the play was enacted and it was wonderful. They came back. So the portrait of that girl, in fact, who was a boy, was also taken by the king. And the king put that portrait of the girl, which was in fact a boy, in a store. Ten years passed. Now this boy is 20 years. One day this boy went into that store and saw the beautiful girl. Fact was that he was a boy. And he took the party to his father. I want to marry this girl. Please find this girl. Now find out where is the veiling power and where is the projection. I can tell you we are doing the same thing again and again every day. Whenever you say I am in stress, when you say I love you, whenever you say that I want money, whether you say that I don't have money, all these ideas in the thoughts have the same story. I gave it, the, that story is a little, uh, little charming, uh, <laughs> but we have the same story in our life when you are suffering from stress, anxiety, duality, content. If you can extract how come this boy and the king said, come on, it is you. And the boy said, no, it is not me. How can you make believe that it is you? <laughs> it is not. <laughs> no, she is a girl. So I project my love to you, and then I say, I love you. It is the same story, my friend. It is the same story. It is not a different story at all. Are you getting it? You, you have to expand that story in your life. How many times you were upset, the person you loved and who said, you know, we tweeted you and who left you? Because it is because of your projection. We think we are so mature enough, and still we are in stress. Close your eyes. <laughs> eyes, are eyes are closed. Being comfortable. That's why, you know, you have been seeing that I, we explore deeply through the thought with a witness attitude, eyes are closely, eyes are gently closed. Gently close your awareness plus eyes. Awareness plus gentle. You just separate the thought and keep the awareness intact. I'm just using that phrase because that will help us to go deeper in the following session and following verse. Awareness plus closed. That any thought I have to recognize if it is hiding or creating a wailing part. Any thought that I'm I'm speaking to you as a as a form of instruction, you have to see that. How the thoughts and the feeling. Also look at the neck joint. Look, less awareness. It is so simple. It's a play in a fun. Neck joint, less awareness. If you don't know, if you don't have a memory of the neck joint, you don't recognize it. Uh, 
So our forefathers, you know, named this part of the body as a neck joint. So any part of the body can be a neck joint. Do you see the faults in that? It's a nomenclature. So I don't get attached to it. Oh, yes, you're right. No, you have to be right. And then you feel the sensation. I used to say sensation can fit in steadiness. Pay attention, awareness plus sensation. If there is no awareness, there is no sensation. Now, why I feel the sensation around the neck joint only? Because of the thought, because of the name and the form, because of the nomenclature, because of the naming convention. It's a naming convention in every language, in every country. What I'm doing. I'm just getting rid of the thought creating the projection. I believe you all are understanding. If not, even then it is okay. You can listen to it again. So you have to live into that extraordinary awareness to, to, so looking at the shoulder joint, so now you are extraordinarily aware and alert. What you said, look. Looking is also a naming convention. Every thought has a naming convention. Why it has a naming convention? So that we can communicate e from each other in a right manner. Looking can be replaced by walking. We rely so much on the thought. That is why we cannot get rid of the thought process. Concealing power. I told you that whatever we discuss, we follow it by so-called the practice. But this is not the practice. This is a contemplation and reflection. So when I say look at the shoulder joints with the, oh, shoulder joint is, oh, this word is also a naming convention. Sensation is also a naming convention. Comfort is also a naming convention. And steadiness is also, what is left is the awareness only. I get out of the projection and also the wheeling power. What is left is the pure awareness. Can I see it? That I is awareness, and I, that the seer is also awareness. Why? Why? How? The mind that was reflecting the thoughts and the feeling, I am not recognizing that consciousness by a thought. Did it make a sense? If yes, good. If not, repeat. You can just keep the, any of the story in your head with being carefree. Both will work. So when I say be carefree, and that is why since the very beginning, I have been saying being carefree means free from all the cares that the mind does. And whatever the cares that mind does, because of the concealing power of the ignorance and the projection power of it, it is good for the body. Good for the mind. 
good for the society, good for my profession, not good for the self-discovery. That is why what we say, thoughts are coming and thoughts are going. Every thought has a concealing power and has a projection power. So that is why in the first instant we say, let the thought come and go. Now, if we clearly understand, let the thought come and go means what? I continue to exist, and thoughts are coming and going. Thought contains the pain, pleasure, profit, loss, victory, defeat. Oh, but I continue to exist. I'm separate from all these experiences and the thoughts pertaining to those experiences. Answer is yes. That is the meaning. Let the thought come and go. And we create another projection. You know, you told me thought comes and goes. So I, I heard you. And my thought was repeating again and again some kind of discomfort, some kind of a pain. So you, you have already created a projection. You did not see that awareness is independent of it. And it happened in a day now. Committed, sincere, eligible seeker can reach there. Let us go a little deeper into the same thing oh, i have a headache headache is a pain so pain is a naming i have a headache what it shows i am the body and projection is headache so as long as i do not remove this willing power i cannot get rid of the headache which is a projection I'm upset. How many times you were upset and you continued to exist? So when you reflect on with reference to the story of a boy who loved a girl, which was his own projection, that is the reason we say, I like red color, or I like this dress, or I love this home, or I love some person. This is all projections. Master says, my seeker asks, what should I do? Do nothing understand what is ignorance what is the willing power and what is the projection power just to recognize it this teaching is the, one of the highest teachings the Eastern West. We are not talking of any God and religion and dogma and cult. Let us go. You can I can say let us go a little deeper. That is also a projection. So if I say let us go a little deeper, you're doing nothing. Any thought and a feeling and experience takes place where it is taking place in the mind. What is mind is the reflected consciousness. 
So you are not getting carried away by any thought, any experience. Or uh, how? Simple, any thought plus awareness. Pain plus awareness. Discomfort plus awareness. Comfort plus awareness. Boy plus awareness. Girl plus awareness. So you prevent your mind to be projected and when the projection is not there, you see only a witness consciousness. Again, you know, we have a naming convention. That witness consciousness means that consciousness is independent, does not depend on any thought. Can you recognize it here and now? Thought depends on consciousness. Consciousness does not depend on any thought. Thought contains the feeling. Thought contains the sensation. Thought contains the emotion. Thought contains the relationship. Thought contains the projection. That is the, one of many meanings of let the thought come and go. I'm warning you, when I say do nothing, so that is also a thought. Not warning, you know, I'm just making you cautious approach. Cautious approach means discernment and dispassion. Discernment and dispassion only comes when we do the repeat listening again and again and again and again. That is why we enter into a deeper state here in our session and gradually the mind goes back to the same ignorance, cover, veiling and the projection and we lose. You see, you all are living into that state without doing anything, and that state remains uniform in our living day to day in all the situation and condition and relations. Body will continue to change, mind will continue to change. World outside will continue to change, but Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, 
提身，提身，提。身体，身体，身体。Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand. Lift your body up, place it on your eyes. Open the eyes inside. Know your experiences. Bring the hands down and share. Our experiences, because it helps you to put into the words, and that settles in your mind. How are you, David? In there? Good morning. Happy Saturday. Um, the that was really powerful. So um, a light bulb went off when you're talking about the pot space, and space is the same and it's awareness and then you talk about the body which is the pot and inside yeah. the body the body space is space which is awareness so um i really really enjoyed that beautiful beautiful so the moment we are settled once you know the understanding takes place in the mind this mind is not going anywhere this mind is not going to move your body that state we have to recognize. Beautiful. Thank you, David. How are you, Jerry? Sir, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, the, it was very interesting for me because I woke up this morning with the thought that mind limits time and space. Good. And, and, and then this meditation um, kind of filled in that whole story because yeah. mind limits it by attaching or projecting and and veiling and yep, if, yep. if we come first from the pure consciousness then we take that with us into the day yes yes that is a beautiful way of narrating our next session is that this master says tell me do you know your real self i don't know that is a thought you have already projected you are not aware. You lost awareness. We are going to talk about that in our next session. That's really good. How are you, Brandy? I'm good, thank you. I always find it so interesting that we have similar experiences either during the meditation or coming into the meditation. But Jury, I was listening to a news story today about a book, and this woman turned her closet into this patio. So it was like this um, like fantasy space thing. And then she realized that she needed to consider the time continuum as well. So then people could time travel in this weird closet space. So I was thinking about the same thing because of this story and just how um, our thoughts are so separate from, I don't know, uh, I'm with you. <laughs> you are with me? Is that a projection? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Yes, you rightly said. One thing I want to just put it here, that we have the similar experiences many a times during the day. But because we are so much overwhelmed with the projection and the wailing power, that we pay too much attention to that wailing and the projection power as if that is a reality. And it flees. It flees. And then we try to catch it. There, that is the problem. How are you, Christina? Good morning. Thank you. Um, I'm always amazed how s the teachings make everything seem so simple. And yet, yes. so many other times in between even the listening, yeah. um, it just is so complex. So that was my realization. Yes, yes, you are right. The teaching is very simple for the highest level of a seeker. 
and so we have to continue to progress to become the higher level of a seeker so what the higher level of a seeker contains the power of discernment and the power of discussion the power of discernment and the power of discussion the moment you possess those two powers the journey is very simple and that is what we need to do it and definitely it is very simple nothing is very complex here how are you dennis um i'm good thank you um i can only say that my mind uh enjoys very much examining and uh dissecting its own ignorance yes uh, with the purpose to understand how exactly it can be removed yes uh yes and that during the the meditation the uh, the the thought that caught my attention uh was that we rely too much on a thought something yes. you said that we will re we rely very very much on it and this is something that uh, i'm going to contemplate and reflect on you're right i can cite an example that's a good way to explain I just give an example. This is mouse. So mouse is definitely separate from the body. So we do not subjectify this mouse. But even if I say that this is my mouse, it uh, we still are free, relatively free. But now this I have a headache. I subjectify it. The thought subjectifies it. Then I have a feeling. So they are both the projection and the uh, wailing power starts working. Oh, don't disturb me, I have already a headache. I have subjectified. I is related to the headache. I is related to the head. And that is what happens in our daily life, and we are lost. We continue to live in ignorance. Beautiful way everyone is doing good. So how are you ever? Uh, thank you, sir. So I'm good. Uh, I was understanding this that uh, because my attachment towards the projection, I'm not able to discern towards these thoughts. But it is as simple as like when I see a dream, I wake up in the morning, I say it's a dream and I forget it. The same way I can do with my thoughts and I can say that it's just a thought and it can go away. Beautiful. So Beautiful. You know, we see the very dreadful dream, and when we wake up in the morning, there is nothing else. Oh, everything is gone. So can I compare all these thoughts, whether it gives me an intense pleasure or a pain as a dream? What is left is the pure awareness. Yes, yes. That's a beautiful. Everyone has a different ways to explain how are you a show. Namaste, sir. No, just peaceful and calm. Good. Peaceful and calm. Beautiful. I know, Terry, you cannot speak, so it's better. You cannot speak. That I, is also important. That I, is also <laughs> I have a question. When we say um shanti yeah that is a a thought that is also is a thought a project pro, projection that also? is also a projection uh, that is also yeah. a projection but this projection helps you to get rid of all the projections right to say um, shanti. <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 so we are using that I have to work through the thought. I cannot pass on the message oh, by the thought. <laughs> yes. So then Om Shanti is just equal to craziness, laziness. But do I have that level of awareness to recognize both these thoughts have the same? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Whether I say I am crazy or whether I am say I am Shanti, 
both are projections. So if your mind recognizes both are projections, you are already free. You are awakened. <laughs> <laughs> but when I say you are crazy, the, that projection hurts you. No. <laughs> 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 no and yet no and yet and when i say om shanti that calms you down right right <laughs> it, it, it cleanses the the other projection yeah yeah Our we self. go these masters go to the ultimate of the reasoning and we ultimately what is left we, we enter into the supra intellectual awareness. Now the intellect cannot argue. It says enough is enough. And you live in that awareness and you are in peace and happiness. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That is all for today. Thank you, sir. Namaste, everyone. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.